Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Trail Mix. I haven't been in the studio for a while now. It's, it's up and away. Thanks very much to Megan and Sankos for standing in last week. That was brilliant work. Um, I've been away, as usual. Um, I went to London. Um, not as usual. I haven't been to London. For more than a year, it transpires. I was shocked and ashamed to discover that fact, but it had been that long. I'd been so long that the majority of my friends have sort of moved out of the centre of London to the very skirts, and I found myself in strange places like Crystal Palace and Wimbledon, which I very rarely go to. But I went to Wimbledon and I saw an excellent exhibition by an artist called Chris Dabrowski. Now, if you happen to find yourself in Wimbledon soon, you should go. It's excellent. I'm going to read some extracts from his book called Escape, and we're going to escape the art school. Because I've been there a lot this week, in fact. Doing things with the Dartington Society, listening to an excellent talk by Simon Fujiwara, and then hobnobbing afterwards in some sort of private upstairs office, which I was especially invited to, which was very strange. However, let's just move this pencil out of the way. In Britain, in the late 1980s, an art education usually entailed leaving school and applying to a further education college to do a foundation course in art and design. This course helped students put together a portfolio of work ready for an interview at an art college elsewhere in the country. The first term gave the student an experience of every application of the visual language. Students did week-long workshops in everything from fashion and textiles to advertising graphics, 3D design and illustration. In among these subjects was a week-long introduction to fine art. At the time, we were all a bit vague about what fine art meant, because the department seemed to cater for every kind of discipline. We had access to workshops, to a workshop shared with 3D design and painting tutors who also taught illustration. One of our tutors was a blunt-speaking Yorkshireman known for his candour and no-nonsense approach. To help delineate what fine art was all about, he would defer to the painter Wassily Kandinsky. As an abstract painter, Kandinsky's work could easily fall into the category of art that makes your mother say, surely a five-year-old could have done that, Christopher. However, even she would agree the bright colours and patterns mean his work has an attractive quality. Regardless of its aesthetic virtues, Kandinsky's work itself was not the crux of our tutor's pearl of wisdom. Instead, he wanted to tell us about a comment he once made in an interview. In an attempt to dismiss Kandinsky's work as only decorative, a critic once asked him, what's the difference between your paintings and, say, for example, wallpaper? To this, Kandinsky replied, an inner need. The tutor went on to explain that it was this inner need that defined the activities in the fine art department as different to those of the rest of the art college. As students, this definition suggested a level of involvement in the creative process that transcended the production of a mere commodity. The reward should be something more personal and direct. The transition from art foundation to degree course meant applying to an art college and moving away from home. Which degree course depended on your skills and the recommendation of your tutors? There was a limited intake at degree level and foundation tutors were responsible for finding places for all their students. The most prestigious colleges were grouped around London or trendy places like Brighton and they could select the best students. If you failed to get into your first choice college, it became progressively harder to find a place. So if a tutor had a student who was less talented or ambitious, they would diplomatically steer them towards a less prestigious college in a more provincial part of the country. I was sent to Hull. Thank you. 